Hi, great day and bless you and God's exciting power and God's exciting anointing and the revelation of God to come upon your life. As you begin to experience this wonderful time, God is also coming with His awesomely, with His presence and His power and the Word of God. Because the time that we are living in, we are just not looking at the spot of Israel where every eyes and every world is going to look at Israel, but we also need to look at our own life to see what God is doing. Jesus is coming back and He's coming back for the church. As we begin to look at all the signs in the Bible, we were talking about the nature, the society, the spiritual realm, the technology that is going to be so vast, so great, and a political situation around the whole world, and everybody is trying to focus on one world order, and people are competing, people are challenging one another, kingdom rising up against kingdom, jealousy, arrogant exchange of word, and all kinds of fear that began to implicate the people around the world, not knowing what is happening. But one thing is for sure for the believers, it's exactly revealed in the Word of God. And you and I need to be excited because God is showing us not only in the political world what is going to happen in Israel as a sign is going to be something awesome that we are going to look at today. I want to thank God, my friends. Don't look at all the circumstances. And I want you to stay focused on God. Stay in the place where God is able to bless your life and meet up with you. And you and I are going to look through the Word of God with such an excitement because God is still looking at you and God is listening to you and God is still answering your prayer. That's why you are alive today. I want, to, I want you to see the rebirth of a nation of Israel. In the next thing that I'm going to talk to you in uh, part 5, it talks about open our spiritual eyes and we are going to look at the nation of Israel, the rebirth of the nation of Israel and God is going to come and visit us because this is something that God wants us to have our spiritual blindness you know, reveal and our eyes to be open. Our eyes to be open. I'm going to read from the book of uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 28 to 32. Luke chapter 21, verse 28 to 32. Let's see verse 28. So when all these things began to happen, Stand and look up for the salvation, for your salvation is near. Verse 29. Then he gave them this illustration. Notice the fig tree. God is very precise. He says, notice the fig tree or any other tree. Verse 30. When the leaves comes out, you know without being told that the summer is near. Verse 31. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can, you will know the kingdom of God is near. Verse 32, I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from all the sense until all these things have taken place. God is saying to us, this generation, our generation, things are not going to pass. We are coming closer and closer to the whole excitement of the book of Revelation and because God is preparing the church and the church is going to be taken up. We are in a time of uh, all kinds of uh, situation, uh, times of uh, difficulty, times of uncertainty, times where we see hard times and uh, God is talking about the rebirth. I want you to see the rebirth is where God already brought independent and God brought about a nation as Israel and the world began to recognize Israel as a nation, as a country by itself. And uh, we are looking at something that God is talking about asking us to open our spiritual blindness. The Bible addresses spiritual blindness as a great human problem. And that is the problem today we face. The problem is that spiritual blind, spiritually blind, 
do not know that they are blind. Even though we talk about spiritual blindness, but uh, they do not know they are spiritually blind. And that is a condition of uh, uh, things that we see even right now. The book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 says, And you say you are rich, you think you become wealthy, and you don't need anything. But you don't know that you are really miserable, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. The word of Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 is so powerful. And then you see another scripture. They are blinded by the gods of the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Satan, who is the god of the world, has blinded the mind of those who don't believe. They are unab unable to see the glorious light of good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is exact likeness of God. It's exact likeness of God. Now, the third portion that I want to share is, they walk in darkness, eventually been blinded by the moral darkness of hatred. John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. For such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by darkness or the kingdom of darkness. And it's, it, God is speaking to us because God wants us to walk in the light. Without light, we cannot see. Jesus is the light of the world. Without Him, we will walk in darkness, number two. Number three, without Him, we cannot see spiritually. Third John chapter 3, verse 3 says, Jesus declared this, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. God is talking about the rebirth of uh, Israel. And because Israel was always related to the fig tree, as I read just now earlier, you know, this generation that will see the establishment will not pass away until all these things take place. Uh, I thank God, God is revealing to us that the nation of Israel will see greater things until the temple will be erected in the same situation as you see now. The Jewish people will be regathered from the four corners of the earth. I want you to see it's been taking place in some pockets of people coming back, but we will see greater gathering of the people in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. It talks about they will be gathered. The sage of Israel will be born again in a day. It has taken place, Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. And God was talking about how God is going to gather. The time of hard times are there, but also the time of rejoicing is taking place because Jesus is coming for the church. And he says, God as Jesus was telling, look at the fig tree. When the fig tree start to blossom, you will know the time and the season of my coming. Israel will be a troubled spot for the whole world to focus on. And, uh, and uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1 to 9, I want you to read by yourself Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1 to 9. It talks about how, you know, Israel will be a troubled spot and the focus of the whole world because everyone will look at Israel. That's why even today, you know, whatever things are taking place, you know, many people look to America, to China and so forth, but there will be a turning time. They will look to Israel. We are in the last day's dream. We are in the last day's dream. God is telling the church, get ready. God is telling the people, be solely turned to God. The sign are very plain for us to see. But not just one sign is given. Their signs are given many, many times. God is saying these signs will take place and God wants to realign and adjust ourselves to see the glory of God. What we see now is nothing compared to the days that are coming. I want to stress this again. 
What you see about the coronavirus is nothing. It'll all fade away. It'll all be cleared. But we have a very short time to live on this earth. We need to share the gospel. We need to bring about holiness and righteousness. Uh, and God is totally angry with the uh, with, uh, hatred, with anger and uh, sin in our life. Uh, uh, let's turn to God and say to the Lord, Oh God, I know you are coming. I want to keep my life. Uh, I don't want to live in darkness. I don't want to be spiritually blind. Uh, and so that you know the world... Uh, the wicked world will not blind me from all the things that is about to take place. But let my eyes be open and I want to walk in the truth. Because Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus said, I'm coming for the church. I'm coming for the kingdom of God. And God wants us to live in the truth. Many people's eyes are blind to, to the spiritual blindness. Because even though they read, they don't understand. Even though they pray, they don't really uh, know what they're doing. But God is telling, we are living in the last days. Let's little by little ask the Lord to unveil our blindness and give us a clarity to see with an open eye so that you know, uh, we'll tell the Lord, Oh God, open our spiritual eyes that we will understand what is taking place right in Israel, right in the world, right around our family, that you and I not only just read and say, Oh God, let Corona go. Corona will go. But God is looking for you to have your spiritual eyes open. God wants to see that your spiritual life will be revitalized, rebirth, rekindled, refired, so that you can know at the time and the season of God that God is doing some awesome thing. What do we do with all these things that are taking place around us? Don't fear of the panic. Don't worry. Uh, don't just throw the towel and say, Oh, I do not know what to do. Let's get things right in our life. Let's go to God and let God take over our life. Let's go to God and let God take over every situation. Receive Jesus. Live ready. Live in a steady manner on the Word of God and look up to God because our Redeemer is coming soon. Our Redeemer is coming soon. God is coming for us. You know, God is coming for us. We are living on the church age and the next event is the rapture that is going to take place. After that, the seven years period, I will talk about that in the later days. But I just want you to know that we are living and we need our spiritual eyes to be open to know the time and the season of God because God is interested in our life. Let's make our spiritual life righteous, clean before our Lord. I want you to make peace with all the brothers and sisters, with all the churches, with all the people around. I want you to make peace, make things right because we need God. I pray as you are staying in the house, don't fight with your family members. Don't husband and wife, don't fight. I know you're all locked down in the house. Don't fight. Don't have a misunderstanding. I think it's time for us to make things right and let the Lord bring in peace. Let's live in the light and the glory of God. Let's walk in the power and the might of God that God's resurrection power will reign upon your life. Church, I want you to have communion with your family. I know certain pockets are opening up, but stay in the wisdom of God don't think everything is fine. You walk everywhere, but stay with wisdom and knowledge and understanding because we are still living on a season where we have not found the great release and the favor of God. Take your communion, communion together with the family. Start praying, praising God and God to bless you. Father, I pray right now, you touch everyone who's listening to this message. Watch over them. Give them strength. Lord, make their immune body system strong. And Father, we pray that you bless them. Keep them, Lord, strong in your faith, strong in prayer, strong in fellowship, and open up their spiritual eyes to see the glory and the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. In Jesus' name, we ask. Amen and amen.